With time, a seed becomes a tree, sheltering us. With time, a skill becomes a talent, empowering us. With time, a technology becomes a tool, enhancing us. By nature, time gives value to almost everything, yet the very thing our society gives value to, our money, loses value over time. This paradox warps our reality by defying the laws of nature, and it stems from the belief that a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. Meaning money must always lose value. We built our reality off of this model. Time value of money, we call it, but in reality, this is just dogma. Since we can keep making more of it, we end up destroying our own purchasing power. So we put it in stocks, put it in bonds, put it in land, put it in funds, put it in crypto, put it in gold. But we are not oracles, so what do we know? We know that it's hard to get by. We know some people may never retire. Is time value of money a lie since it discounts the monetary value of our time? If time is money, how are we moving in different directions? We're working longer for less, we end up just giving away our freedom. Give up liberty for policies, give up our agency to the authorities. Cause when our foundation is built on complexity, we simplify humans by giving up our humanity. Reality check, we've strayed too far from the truth The world economy's a wreck when one plus one no longer equals to two And if life's created from the truth, along the way something got screwed And we let our own dogma subjectify value And we divorce action from consequence We defy the law of physics when we make scarcity infinite We disregard the language of mathematics So our systems are built in a fallacy Our society's based on a fantasy In the absence of truth, we're living in the shadows of our own reality And that's the root problem, man-made rules can be broken. As our trust crumbles, so does the progress of our civilization. But one thing remains constant, no one can cheat nature. So why not use it to architect a stronger base layer? The most beautiful buildings engineered based on these consequences. Natural law drives rigor needed to build something enduring and compromising on principles that accounts for the flaws. Because when our lives are at stake, the gravity of truth cannot be ignored. So if our monetary systems were designed like structures, it would embody energy and matter, so the money itself matters. An unbreakable limit enforced by costliness of creation ensures the structure holds value for many generations. A rule-based system governed by math builds a transparent ecosystem that can self-error correct. With no one in charge, no words are taken as fact. Only work from computation can actualize truth of timestamps and like water flowing off a cliff. Down the path of gravity, computational energy makes time flow one way only. It is this irreversibility which gives value to our money by upholding consensus of scarcity to create one shared reality. Now the map is the territory. Now we're working with high fidelity. Now money is truthfully time and energy bound by finality. Now we have the ability to manifest each of our dreams and build a world that's much more reflective of all of our needs. And that's the purpose of money, merely a tool to shape our reality, merely a function to harness and express individuality, but just a way to live freely, just a means for possibility, because when we build on integrity, we enhance the beauty of humanity, the most beautiful societies are built from diversity of our thoughts that come to life when we're empowered individually, because when our money tomorrow is worth more than today, we shift from predicting to creating the future ourselves. And when our money grows in value, we grow thoughtful in how we use it. Natural law drives rigor needed to fund something enduring, something truly worth it, something that pushes the sky's limit, something only possible when our real value and consequence exist in boundless virtual dimensions. Imagine potential creations fueled by monetary life force lasting for many generations. We will venture into new territories and unleash these possibilities once we learn to embrace the truth of our reality. What do you do with the Bitcoin besides it just gather value? Real estate developers in New York City, they're not buying the real estate because they want to live in it. But like most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets at a profit. People, 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 people that use, that use, that use, that use fiat, 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 currency, currency, currency.
as a store of store of store of value we call them we call we call them we call people that use fiat currency we call them we call 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 There's a name for them. We call them the poor. We call them the poor. Okay. Right, like the point is if if you have the superior asset, it's going up forever more. Forever. Right, I mean right, but I mean we can all look Bitcoin sort of uh, as forever more. People people that use fiat currency as a store of store of value we call them we core we call them we core people people that use fiat currency we call them we core 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 There's a name for them. We call them the core. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had to end it. It's too good not to. All right. Let's go ahead and jump over here. Looking at the portfolio. Real quickly here. Actually, let me do one thing. Just one second. Get the right screen up. Uh, right now, you're looking at all my all my purchases for the day. I actually sold um, a few of my Starbucks, uh, our Starbucks puts. Um, that's the first time I've done that in a while. They were up about 15% on the day. So I couldn't help but do that. Um, I bought Cypher, I bought MicroStrategy, I bought CleanSpark, Could, CleanSpark, MicroStrategy, PayPal, June, uh, January 2026, of course. Um, ArcG, January 2026. I think that's it. I bought a lot. I did a lot of buying. I bought um, some shit coins. I bought about 5,000 in Solana, 4,000 in Near Protocol, some Arbitrum, and a few others. I can't even remember what they were. Um, honestly, I couldn't tell you. All right, so let me, I think I got the portfolio. One second here. I just have to adjust the screen a little bit. Let me see. All right, let me bring it back over. All right. So, today, down, I want to say about 240,000. Um, mostly because of two things. PayPal, January. Here's a great thing. I front loaded a bunch of my loss <laughs> for PayPal. PayPal today was real bad for, for January 2025. It was down 27.59%. Um, so you can see why I love leaps, even if you pay a premium for them. It makes a hell of a difference. Like I'm down 47% my January 2025s, but I'm up almost 25% in my 2026s. So and um, they were down 7% versus the 28 almost of the January. So again, if this, if this, I don't think there's a better example that shows how options perform if you have really short time frames. Um, they get butchered. They get butchered, especially the, the more the math calculates. It says, oh, it's going to be really hard to get to this number. And again, those were 140s. These were, these were reasonable when I bought them, you know, back in June. Now it seems like a stretch to get to that number, but we'll see how things play out. Um, but again, that was a eighty thousand dollar drop just in PayPal today. So if you take out that, you've taken out like I don't know thirty five to close to forty percent of losses. So pretty crazy number. Um, also, Tesla was a, a contributor. SoFi, the usual culprits, um, and then the miners got pretty butchered today. MicroStrategy, everything. I mean, if you we'll look at Bitcoin in a second, but it definitely went down as well. All right, let me get over here. We already looked at that. Let me get over here. Heat map. Heat map is just 
blood red across the board outside of Apple. Apple's the only thing. And Apple's probably the thing that should be doing one of the worst right now. Um, there was news out of China, too, that they don't want. They told the telecoms not to use any of our chips anymore. So that's hurting a lot of the chip sector. Um, there's just there's a lot going on today, guys. A lot. There's there's the stuff between Iran, Iran and Israel. Um, there's just a, there's a lot happening. But anyway, it's just bread. I don't even know what you could say about this. It's red everywhere. Yeah, these are, this is all U.S. companies, not just the S&P 500, and it's just a kaleidoscope of red. All right, so again, um, shit coins got hit hard. If you go over the one day here, you could see where we were sitting on this balance yesterday at like 273 and dropped all the way down to like 230 something, or 215 it said at one point. Now I did buy about 15 grand, I think, worth. So that probably pumped this up. That's probably what you're seeing for some of this. Um, but again, shit coins in this kind of environment where you got a little bit of tension, they drop hard, <laughs> real hard. Um, same with miners, but even more so with shit coins. And you could see this if we just go to, let's look at the daily here. So you could see this by the double digit percentages. You got like almost 20% on some of these. Um, some over 20% drops, like Bonk down 22%, Injective down 188 There's just a bunch of blood in the streets. Um, so a great time to buy, if you ask me, for long term, at least a year hold. Now, I did want to point this out. So it looks like, and I mean, this isn't established yet. We'd have to get this closer to close today, but I'd love to see Bitcoin get above peak volume here on the local time frame at like 67.4. It would be much better if it had this wick and then broke back up and established above that support zone. If it does not do that, I mean, we could roll over. I did a post about this. I could probably show that in a second too, but here's the gist. If if we start to roll over more, I mean, the next stop is like 64-ish, um, 63, and then the one after that is down to like the 57 range. So one should be mentally prepared, even though I do believe chances are we go higher. There was just so much FUD across everything today. It was all about like World War III, um, everything. Oil started out hot, dollar up, like pressure with the yen in Japan, just so much going on today. A lot. All right, so we did close. This is the weekly. So this weekly is our second dip here, and it was pretty far down near the bottom on the S&P, down 1.46%. Not a super great number. If we look at the, the daily here, though, we are at the 50 moving average. So, I mean, this could be a place where you would get some bounce or would like to see some. Um, if we don't get it here, then, I mean, really, we're looking at, you know, further, <laughs> like a decent drop still. Now, if we do look at the NASDAQ, we can notice that this one actually dropped and established support above peak volumes over like the last four and a half, almost five months. So this, this even though it's rejected off the .618, it looks like it's trying to find some bounce. Again, down 1.66 on the day, uh, but just looking a little bit stronger than the S&P. Again, this one hasn't fully rolled over yet. Um, it looked weak before, but this one, you can kind of see the clear downtrend. This one just looks like flat sideways consolidation. So the Nasdaq's looking stronger. Um, we did not find support on the first fib line with the Russell. So, and again, the Russell took it the worst, 1.93. It was definitely a risk off day. I don't think there's much to say about that. If the Russell drops much further um, on the weekly time frame, we've got the 200 moving average at 1939. That should be a strong area of support and one that we were able to test and bounce above um, back in January. Oil. So like I said, oil started out hot, right? Keep on having to change the color of this line back and forth. But then, then despite the narrative being really strong, FSD price lowered. Are you saying that that actually happened? Did they just do that, Dan, 24 up? Um, but you can see where oil started off really strong, 87, 60 something a barrel. But then it just wicked underneath this resistance line again and failed to maintain up there. So if we go to the weekly here, we only had one week where we were above it, and now we're underneath of it again. Kind of a good trend. Um, we've got to see, though, what happens between Iran and Israel over the weekend. Is Iran just blustering like they normally do, or is there a broadening of World War III? Um, because I like to think that we're already in it. Um, I don't like, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't like to think we're already in it. I do think we're already in it. Um, just looking at, you know, the war in Ukraine and Russia, like, again, what was our most formidable power years ago, um, basically at war with the West, allying with 
China who openly wants to destroy the West and our he hegemony of the world and take over um, the entire South China Sea like they've been planning for for, for you know, a decade at least, uh, since Xi's reign, uh, maybe before. And um, there's just a lot going on. It's a pretty crazy world right now. So, all right. Anyway, let's move on. So oil is down. So it's interesting that oil dropped so much. Um, it's very interesting with everything that's going on. Very, very strange. The dollar continues to gain strength. I'm going to talk about this more in a little bit here when we look at through more economic data. But it's very important for you to understand. Okay, intelligent computing. Um, sorry, breaking news. Sorry, Merit. Uh, Tesla has officially lowered the monthly full self-driving subscription price to $99 from $200. That's fucking cool. That's really smart. We'll have to check out Tesla's price in a little bit. Super glad they're doing that. I, 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 I'd like 79. I think it sounds even cheaper and it's a really easy thing for somebody who's got some money to be like, yeah, I'd pay for that. But um, that's good too. I'll take it. But yeah, look at the dollar over here. So the dollar has, pro we have problems with the dollar. The strengthening of the dollar and the fact that we didn't roll over is bad. Um, it, it will draw stocks down. It will push more people towards the United States as a world reserve currency. It will damage the Japanese yen. It will damage the yuan. It will damage the Russian ruble and every other currency in the world as we gain strength against them. It's called the dollar milkshake theory. If you don't know what it is, you need to know what it is. So pop it up on YouTube. Um, there should be a few different sources for it, but it's very important that you understand why a rising dollar is bad. It's also the reason... If you guys haven't seen this yet, I made a video, um, and I had Larry Fink. Uh, I had, I had, there was an interview with Larry Fink on CNBC, and I made a video commenting on that. Definitely check it out. Um, I'll probably put it at the end of this, but check my um, live feeds from today. It's a really good one where he talks about inflation, AI, all this other stuff, um, and talks about you know a multitude of th the things. Um, I don't know if he covered the dollar in it. I think that's what I was thinking. But the dollar, again, like a strengthening dollar is really, really bad. We don't want it. And we need to lower rates in order to prevent it from strengthening. And I think he did cover that in the video. If it, if it wasn't, it was the one from yesterday. Um, I'm going to skip this because I'm going to do this in posts. Um, so the fear and greed index. As you can see, we dropped into neutral heavy. Almost, almost went into fear. So we're getting a good reset here. One could argue that we might be near the bottom. Maybe we have a further flush out Monday morning um, and then start to find our footing. There's definitely some indication, um, like I was talking about, in some of the indices, like the NASDAQ and the Russell at least, where the bottom isn't too far. The S&P probably has the most to drop. Um, before I get to this video, I do want to do that video, but I want to show some other po posts and then I want to get to Tom Lee. Um, let's just refre refle or refresh Truflation here. And I'm showing you this too because I, I, it's going to lead into Tom's comments. So it still says 1.74. Again, it's lowest in a while. Um, CME Fed Watch Tool. Let's just take a look here real quick. And then we'll get into some U.S. economic data. And then we'll watch that um, brief Tom Lee video and I'll comment on it. All right. So May, not much of a chance of lowering rates. Still, crazily enough, 4.4%. June. So, it, so it's, we're not saying it's not happening, but it's probably not happening. All right, so June, we have a 27.2% chance of lowering rates. Now, I think people sometimes forget this, but this doesn't mean it's not happening. It just means that there's a one to three ratio that it won't, right? So that can change. We have more data that's going to be coming out between now and June. We're going to actually have two more reads on inflation and PPI. So we have plenty of time for the view to change and for this to turn into 50-50 or even like more likely than not. So just all I'm trying to say is don't just automatically jump to fucking September like everybody seems to think we're supposed to be doing. Um, it doesn't have to happen in September. Here, one sec. I'm going to adjust my mic. Hopefully it doesn't kill audio. All right. There we go. Hopefully that didn't kill audio. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah. So what else do I want here? So I'm going to jump over here. Um, actually, I'm not going to do that. I want to do this real quick. We're going to come back over here. Take this off. Go over here. Mobile Eye having better FSD than Tesla. No, no, man. I mean, if you're doing HD mapping and all that kind of shit, you probably could. But 
yeah, I wouldn't trust much of any of that. All right. All right, let's start here. Import prices in the United States. So I said in here, um, and let me actually zoom in. I said they're, they're, they're stronger than they have been, and they're continuing to go higher. Uh, we don't love this when we see it. Um, we want them to weaken. So I said this came in stronger than anticipated and is something we want to see and, uh, and see turn into a very shallow bounce in order to avoid the inflation narrative. So here it looks bad. It looks like it's just going straight up, right? Again, we don't want, uh, we don't want prices of goods being imported to go up, right? Like we might, we might not have a problem exporting goods that are going up in price if we're making margins and people are continuing to buy, but we don't want our import prices going up. But if you look here, it's still not that bad. And one could argue that it's from an abnormally you know, low, low, right? And that we should be trading more in this like 1% to 2% range. And so, sure, it's 0.4% year over year. Does it really fucking matter that much? Now, also, let's go back here. So U.S. export prices. It says they're still heading higher, but slightly lower than expected. This is good for U.S. exporters if they can maintain sales at these uh, uh, recovering levels. So again, one could argue kind of the same thing, though, that exports were abnormally low for price and they're starting to rebound up. But I'm going to show you some um, data out of China that indicates that this number could still potentially stay negative um, as they export deflation to the world, or at least disinflation. All right, so China's, China's social central government financing continues to expand while private credit dies. I'll show you the private credit in a second here. Uh, this is a, and it's not even private, really, because part of it's state-backed. Um, I said this is a popular pattern in many in many countries right now, including our own. Just you know, governments printing money and giving money away, helicopter money, all that shit. I said definitely not a healthy trend for the world's second largest economy, though. What I wanted to point out here is they've been doing that for a while, but from 2017-18 on, it's accelerated um, and gotten dramatic. Right, and this this is a country that doesn't have a lot of money, and at the same time, they're just printing tons of money. Now, I wanted to show China's loan growth as well because this data just came in last night when we were sleeping. It says it, it says um, their growth has been in decline for over 15 years, but now it's steepening to the downside. So what I'm showing here is that basically after 2008, after a massive pump where they just stimulated economy their economy like crazy and generated tons of loans. I mean, look at this year over year, 35 percent growth, <laughs> like. And then it lasted for a while. Um, this was massive growth phases, uh, just like they had back in 2004, 2005. But look at loan growth since. It's dying. It's dying, um, especially by their standards. It's dropped into single-digit territory, um, and it's done that since 2023, right? It's dropped into the single uh, – or actually even closer to the pandemic, it's dropped into these levels. Um, because the government and and the state-backed banks and all, they just don't have money anymore. And then there's been massive capital flight because of the pandemic, and people realizing, oh my God, this is a communist state where they're going to lock us in our houses and do whatever the fuck they want. Um, they might even weld the fucking door shut. Is this really a place we want to be doing business? And so you saw just tons of Western investment diminishing, and then that's caused their loan growth to plummet. Um, Again, single-digit numbers. If you look up until the, you know the pandemic, um, around that time frame, they that hadn't happened since two thousand and two. So a twenty-year event. All right, Chinese imports also look really bad, coming in at negative one point nine percent year over year when it was supposed to be positive for March. I wanted to point this out too. So the amount of imports um, with China. If you look over here, this is like the healthy, strong period going from, you know, the early 90s to like mid-2015. You could see that where they still had strength. But after the, you can also see that here, though, after the great financial crisis, there was this massive, you know, drop. And then they stimulated like fucking crazy over the next couple of years. But look at it. It's never been quite right since. It was in a declining pattern until about 2016. Got a little bit of a bump. Dropped back down again. Got a little pandemic bump. Drop back down again, but look at this. We're establishing lower highs every time. They're just drifting downward. They're getting lower lows, lower highs. This is not a fucking chart you want from a technical standpoint in, in, whatsoever. And it screams that this economy is fucked. Chinese exports had a massive drop in March. Negative 
7.5 year over year, much lower than forecast and consensus. So consensus was, or forecast was negative 1.2, consensus was negative 0.3, and they saw another massive drop. And look at how much how much time since 2022 we've spent in this deflationary realm for our exports. Exports are their lifeblood. They have they have they have the, the, some of the highest savings rates in the world. A normal a normal sophisticated economy, first world tier economy, will have like. 70 percent you know services business and people just spending a ton of money these guys are averaging like 30 35 percent they're much much lower um they have no service-based economy they have a real estate market that is in a state of collapse like we've never seen during modern times it makes um it makes what happened in the united states during the great financial crisis look like nothing and and then at the same time the lifeblood of their economy exports have dropped precipitously so i'm sure that's okay right it's only the second biggest economy in the world. So probably nothing to worry about whatsoever. Let me go back here. That's sarcasm too, just to be clear. All right, so let's start up a little bit higher. I wanted to point to this again too. So the Japanese yen, I think I touched on this maybe in yesterday's video. It closed. And you noticed I'm wearing red. I'm going to have to get a green shirt too. I don't want to be like meet Kevin and dye my fucking hair every time the market's going up and down. So I'm too old for that shit. I don't have a lot left. And um, so I'm probably just going to change my shirt for the markets. And today was a red day and it was a bright red day. So here we go. But anyway, the Japanese yen closed at its lowest level since 1990 against the U.S. dollar, losing more than 50 percent of its value from 2011 peak. So the yen is in precipitous decline. Precipitous, right? Since after the great financial crisis, they got a big boost. Then it's just been down. They are not the only currency around the world that's having this problem. Not only is China exporting deflation to the world, but their their yuan is getting crushed, just like the yen is getting crushed, just like currencies all around the world are being destroyed by the US dollar and the strength that it has. And here's a really important thing. You know how we fix that? We lower fucking rates. So to all you people, whoever you are, who think that rates don't need to come down, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. If we don't lower rates, um, all kinds of bad things happen. There's an 18 to 24 month lag on what the Fed does and the outcome to the economy. We have to fucking lower rates. We have to. So whether you realize that or not, you'll figure it out. Again, I posted earlier that oil was going up and we know it's not there anymore. All right, my friend Mortensen Bach, I think he took the day off because he was probably like, fuck it. I, I don't want to deal with this shit. And I get that. <laughs> I do. Um, Bix trend since 2020 got destroyed from, from there uh, every time. Markets are extremely nervous with VIX up almost 30%. True. Uh, we're hitting an important level today. I'm staying off X. I wanted to share this as I feel there's a lot of fear out there today. And he's 100% right. And it just shows that we're in this potential breakout zone that we've hit a bunch of times and the rule is like when you hit it um, and you keep hitting it um, you probably want to go through it and so I think again that's probably some fear and I've got to look up the VIX and see if it ever did but again you see you can see down here the S&P 500 has been climbing 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 and the VIX has been dropping 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 well if the VIX starts exploding higher you can bet the S&P is probably going to be going lower um, that's I think that's a lot of what he was trying to represent and I think he's got the RSI in here too all right. Anyway, so I was talking about geopolitical fears and our favorite geopolitical fear of the day has switched to the Middle East, guys. Well, that's one of them, kind of. Um, Iran is threatening to strike Israel. Now, from what I know about these guys, they're kind of little bitches who say, talk a lot more than they actually act. So we'll see if it actually amounts to anything. If it does amount to something, holy cow, are we going to have a down market on Monday? Um, but I think Bitcoin strangely would go up. Maybe not immediately, but it would be it would empower Bitcoin. I don't want Bitcoin to go up for this reason. So I hope everything chills the fuck out. And I hope these guys are as full of shit as I think they are. <clears throat> also, on the note of World War III, yay, China tells telecom firms to phase out foreign chips in a ma massive blow to Intel and AMD. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how much this is actually going to amount to. I think it's more of a power play. I think it's a negotiating play. I think it's them trying to, um, 
just get some relief from export restrictions so that they can push their shit out to the world and not have massive tariffs because they're already in so much pain. But it could be them prepping for World War III too. I don't think we can leave that. I mean, G kind of tells us over and over and over and over again, almost every single day, or the highest regimes of his government, that they're preparing for war. So I think we have to kind of trust them and take them at their word. The dollar closed about here today. Um, so it's up. I think I talked about it. Yeah, yeah, we went over it. Let's go back. All right. So I'm just going to make sure I didn't miss any other bookmarks real quick. Anything else I wanted to cover? Again, watch this video. It's a good one from Larry Fink. I find myself agreeing with him on a bunch of stuff. There's only a few things I disagreed on. Uh, oh, I did want to talk about this. Again, the $99 a month FSD that we just got word on. And I'm going to start looking at chats here and chatting here in a second. Um, Darren broke it down. Darren Appleton. He said $3.30 a day. Uh, I can tell you what, man. If I wasn't using FSD and I had a Tesla... And I just got told that it's only $100 a month now. And I do a lot of traveling. I'd probably fucking pay for that. If I was like a salesperson or whatever who's got a Tesla, I would pay for that. I would. It's not a bad price whatsoever. And it beats having to buy it, buy it straight up. But it also increases Tesla's, like, I don't even know if you could call it, subscription. Let, let's say there's subscription model, um, which right now like has premium connectivity for internet that you can get for $10 a month. <clears throat> there isn't a lot to it, right? Um, but this, 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 maybe maybe they get more people paying like $110 a month. Um, so this this is interesting. This is them starting to turn into a software company. I don't think we can just disregard this and ignore it. I think it's very smart that they're doing it. And I do agree. Sawyer Merritt threw, threw out a poll. Some people were saying 37.3% said, let's make it 79 a month. I like that number better. I think it goes over better. Um, I, think, I think Tesla can kind of tweak it. But I love that now we have these, you know, tri free trials and we're offering an a, re a reasonable, because I thought 200 before was unreasonable. I didn't see how anybody was going to sign up for that. But I think it's reasonable now that that this happened. Uh, also, I, I, uh, I, should, I wanted to say this. So with my Tesla um, Cybertruck, I did decide to go ahead and do financing on that because like, why would I use my cash when I could buy Bitcoin and shit, right? Before I have it. So anyway, so I, I got a financing on it. Um, I just went ahead and did that today um, and switched from cash to that. And uh, I think the loan was like at 6.1, 6, 6, it was 6.1 or 6.3%. Um, my credit score is pretty good. It's in the 800s, right? But I still thought that was a pretty reasonable interest rate coming directly from Tesla. I don't know who it's going to be with. I probably won't find that out until like the final days. Um, but I got the approval or maybe there's a place I could do it. I just couldn't find it on the mobile app. But I did think that, you know, if they're able to approve people at like 6.1, 6.3, that's not a crazy interest rate on a car loan. So, um, I don't know. We'll just see. I think it's getting more interesting by the day. Very excited about Tesla. Also, I wanted to point out that my man Javier Millet from Argentina was hanging out with, with Elon Musk himself here. Um, I know Argentina desperately wants to increase, biz increase business with the West. They want the perception to be that we're open for business. I think they will accomplish that. Um, I think they'll do it in probably a more friendly way than uh, Bukele with El Salvador did. Um, I, I actually like him too, but he's been a little more like antagonistic about America and talking about how it's bad. Whereas Javier Malay is like, we should have been like fucking America. We turned into a socialist communist state, fucked our, 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 our people for over 100 years. I don't know how many of you know this, but, you know, 100 years ago, actually even less than that, like 80 years ago, people thought that Argentina was going to be one of the richest, if not the richest country in the world. And they fucked themselves up. And he's trying to fix that now. He's trying. So think about this. Think about what could happen if not only do we have a United States of America in North America, but what happens if we have Argentina, a massive country with a lot of resources that's becoming capitalistic and democratic and who wants to work with us and told China to fuck off if they start to really increase ties and we start working with them more, with India more, with Mexico more, then it's like, fuck Brazil. We'll, we'll make Brazil reset. We'll make them come back to democracy, whether their shitty government likes it or not. 
So I'm really digging this. I love that that Elon met with Modi um, last week too. Very cool stuff. Real quickly, um, conversations about CleanSpark. I just wanted to get you guys caught up on this. So in case you didn't already know this, I said it in yesterday's video, the $500 million ATM from before, there was confusion because they had a $500 million one. Then they have an $800 million one, but the $500 million one wasn't gone. So it's like, is it $1.3 billion? But then they retired the, five point, uh, the $500 million one yesterday. So it's only $800 million. And then there was a conversation going on today as well, just talking about, how, hey, they've got approval for all these miners now. They're getting, those are shipping. They've got like their full capacity of miners that are going to be coming out. <clears throat> but they have nowhere to put them. How much power are they going to need? Yada, 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 yada. Well, we know that they've got serious conversations with like 22 different public and private mining companies um, or power energy facilities. They don't, they don't want to spin everything up from scratch. They want to basically have plug and play. But also, I wanted to point out something else here, and it's using Sebastian Ski's uh, PDF for miners that, he, that, he, that, that you can get access to from his Patreon. I only like to show a few things from him and then just kind of sell it because I don't want to take his proprietary information and treat it like my own. That would be a dick move. But this is Clean Spark here. And somebody had made a comment. Um, and actually, I better give them credit too. Uh, Penny Ether made a comment and I thought it was a really good one. It said, see the post. I said 200 megawatts for end of Q2. If they want power their, to power their whole fleet, they can also just swap out older hash rate, worse than 25 joules per tera hash, and put a newer hash rate and wouldn't need any extra mega, uh, megawatt um, for end of, uh, of, of Q2. And I totally agree with that. So we got the halving coming up. These, these hash rate speeds of like 95,000, 100,000, 88,000, 86,000, fuck all that shit. S dump that equipment and liquidate it and sell it off to other people and do it sooner than later because you want to get ahead of the, of the herd when you're selling off used, used old ass equipment. You could sell it to people that will buy it for something. You just write off the rest of it. Um, it should look good on the, on the books. And then at the same time, you can bring in powerhouse equipment that you want to turn on right fucking away. And I, I think, again, this is one of the best miners out there, um, one of the best uh, run miners out there. So I expect them to do exactly what I just said. Um, so, so to the people, to the idiotic Mara pigs, not Mara investors, just you pigs, I want to say this. They can just turn off the shitty old equipment. And these guys actually know how to manage a mining company. So, and keep their shit up. So they don't need a bunch of new facilities. They could just put in equipment that's incredibly more efficient and then have stupid numbers coming in for revenue and net income. So think about that. Anyway, said Bitcoin needs to hold here. Or we'll be looking towards these targets. I kind of showed that a little bit, but again, there's the visual that I have out here on X just showing that if we don't wick up, if we can't get her up, we're going down. And we still have this bearish divergence going back to, you know, we're March. Um, I think that's it for all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Let me just, uh, I think we're good. Tackled it from all ends. Got through the bulk of what I wanted to say. Now, real quickly, real quickly, I want to pull up Tom Lee. And I want to listen to his conversation talking about his thoughts on markets right now. And what he believes gonna ha he's, is going to happen. They're obviously, he's getting a lot of heat right now, right? Because like me, he was talking about pushing towards small caps. And people that have done that recently have gotten pretty fucking wrecked, especially the recovery play too, right? We're not seeing any love this week. We haven't seen love for about 10 days. Um, so so anyway, he's taking a lot of heat, but I think, I think what he says is of value, and I think he's right, and let's listen. Back with the S&P sliding again today. The S&P now on track for its worst weekly loss since October. But Fundstrat's Tom Lee says it's temporary. A temporary moment of pain and a buy-the-dip opportunity. He joins me now, Post 9, to make that case. Good to see you again. I'm glad you're here in person, too. So, so you don't think that much changed this week? Uh, I mean, I think the narrative got muddled because that CPI report was a disappointment. But it was driven by what, it, what we'd call stubborn components, shelter, auto insurance. You know, the median core CPI component now has only 1.7% year-over-year inflation. I mean, inflation is normalizing. It's just not evident in the total picture. So the PCE in a I 100% agree with his comments. It's shelter, transportation. It's car insurance, man. How the fuck? How can you just look at car insurance and be like, oh, my God, it's so bad. And since it's so bad, the world is obviously falling apart and, and reinflating 
especially when you see the second largest economy in the world getting fucking crushed. And you know the third largest economy, Japan, is also getting fucking crushed by our currency. A couple of weeks is going to be more favorable, we think, than these latest inflation reads. And I know what everybody says about it's, you know, it being the Fed's favored measure on, on where inflation is. But are you entertaining the idea that this is not going to be as easy as you once thought it was going to be for this last mile and therefore the market can't do what you once thought it could? Uh, I mean, I th I'd say that that's really the narrative disruption this week, you know, because now the Fed has three inflation reports that it can't argue against that are a little hotter than expected. And the bulls can't really explain them away either, can they? That's right. So what we would need to see is April and May CPI improvements, which is in the future, um, and then keeps the Fed from standing in the way of the economy. What we don't want is a Fed that wants to further slow the economy, which is rate hikes. And I think if they just do even one hike this year, it's still a, actually a good environment for stocks. One, one cut, you mean? Sorry, one cut. Yeah, let's yeah. be clear. See, that's a Freudian slip. I mean, because the, you know, the, the greatest fear of all is that they're going to have to hike again, however remote that possibility seems today. And even if you put into the, the, the soup all the Fed commentary that we've gotten of late just seems to be push off rather than push up. That's right. And I think it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's, even if CPI does look like it's somewhat sticky, PCE, as you pointed out, is more cooperative and PPI is, and measures like trueflation show inflation much softer, you mission inflation. Oh, oh, we're talking about PCE. And in case you guys thought I was a crackhead, um, he looks at trueflation too because he, he knows the value in it. Just want to throw that out there. Not, I'm not alone on an island here. Expectations much lower. So I think at some point we could also just ask is, is CPI a bit aberrant? What about the valuations of the market? How do you counter the argument that they're just way too stretched? Multiples are just way too rich, given what now is likely to be the case of cuts later on. Uh, I mean, I think when someone looks at 20 years of history, that's the argument they'll make. If they look at 90 years of P.E. multiples versus interest rates, when the 10 years between 4 and 5 percent, which is a pretty big range, the median P.E. is 20 times. So we're, we're not even at a median P.E. multiple of what's existed whenever the 10 years been in this range. So we're not even at the median of the P.E. levels when the 10 year bond has been in this range. So he's saying that we're not overvalued. That isn't a popular narrative at all. And then if you look at the median stock, it's actually at 16 times. I'd say that there's upside to earnings. I think multiples can expand. I don't think 5,200 is the ceiling for stocks this year. What, it, what, what feels like the right, the right ceiling now? Uh, I, I know this is uh, going to be tough for investors to, to embrace it, but I think something like 5,600, 5,700 is probably where the S&P exits the year, maybe much, even much, higher. Much more backloaded into that than you once thought? Uh, I'm sorry. Did he just say 6,700? Did he just say 6,700? <laughs> So he said up here. He says up here by the end of the year. Let's just see what that is here real quick. Let's see if we can. We got to draw that, right? Like that's an interesting number here. Let me. Uh, oh, I got to grab the right one. So what he's saying, what Tom just said. Is that he thinks we could go to up 31% on the S&P by the end of the year? Uh, I think it's still back loaded because we'll have the cuts behind us and we'll have visibility into 2025 20, earnings. Oh, my bad. Probably could be 270, maybe 280 next year. Well, when you <laughs> Did I mishear it? Let me go back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes more sense. That's closer to my target anyway. Ah, so he's not as optimistic as me. He's saying 11 or 12%. I still think we're going up here. Thank you for correcting me, guys. Appreciate it. You say we'll have the cuts. And I'll add this too, real quick. So I think when he says the S&P is still doing that, he's also saying that he still believes his Russell target is 50%. So he's talking about the S&P underperforming and the Russell doing better. Behind us. And I would agree with that. Are you so sure, right? So let's just take June off the table. Let's, for argument's sake, no June. Yeah. All right, sorry, still another thought. I would also argue that 
the NASDAQ will outperform. I think tech still does well in this current environment. Um, I, so I think it'll be kind of inverse of what it has been. I think instead of S&P, NASDAQ, Russell in that order, it'll be Russell, NASDAQ, S&P as far as performance once we get over the hump of whatever we're doing right now, which hopefully is short-lived. You think the first one's in July? Or it could be September. But it. But it, that's why I asked you if the, if the, the move in the market that you just suggested is backloaded. Because yes. you're not going to get a big move until you see the first cut. Now, At this point, now there's a lot of disbelief in the market. That's right. And, Scott, one thing to keep in mind is the probability of a June cut has been reduced, but it, it can come back if we have a good April and May CPI, because then it's going to put back into focus what is the trend in CPI. It does feel stubborn when you look at January, February, March. Now, the flip side of the argument that the bulls would suggest is all of this is noise. Keep your eye on the ball. The Fed's going to cut. They may wait. They may not do as many as we thought, but the regime has changed and the economy is going to remain good and earnings are going to be strong enough and they're still going to cut because they're going to be able to. And they'll point to the PCE and say, just don't be blindsided by the other noise. That's the story that matters most. I mean, I'd say that that's a story that's going to, as the dust settles from this week, that's what's going to sort of push back into the front lines of people's minds because it's totally different than 2022 and 2023. And we're in the middle of earnings season and think delivered earnings will be good. And yeah. interest rates, uh, look, it's not comfortable here at 4.5%, but the that. economy's handling it. And there's For now. For now, yes. So you made a call, Still learning I the think, Mac. first on this program that small caps were going to rally 50% this yes. year. It was several months ago. I can't oh, imagine that you still believe that's going to happen now that rate cuts have been pushed out seemingly until the fall. Um, well, I think one, in that the viewers need to keep in mind that small caps almost rallied 20 percent in a month last year. So for them to rally 50 percent over the next eight months, I think it's still very plausible, given that median earnings growth for a small cap in the Russell 2000s, 19 percent versus 11 percent for the S&P, and the median P.E. is 10 times versus 16 times in the S&P. Oh, I know why they're cheap, but they're cheap for a reason, some would say. Sure, but then if, if we have corporate CEO confidence go up and so mergers start to happen, I think you're going to have a very, very quick adjustment in, in the price of small cap stocks. And La again, okay, I'm sorry, finish your thought. Oh, and you know, there's six trillion in the sidelines as oh, well. Okay, lastly and, and, and briefly, mega caps. Are you still as bullish as you have been? Yes, yeah, because uh, you know, I still think it makes sense to own what's working, and that's AI related and the Ozempic related names. But you know, now on the margin, the ISM is turning up, so you want to own some industrials. And because of Fed cuts, I like small caps. All righty. We'll see. Tom Lee, thank you. Yeah, That's thanks. Fun stress. Tom Lee here at Post 9. Up next, we're trading. All right. I got to say, I'm still siding with Tom Lee, guys. He's brilliant. He's not always right. He's overly optimistic. But since I'm also very guilty of that, um, you just have to remember that, right? Like, uh, there's people that look towards solutions. There's people that look for problems. Um, Tom and myself are people that like to look towards the solutions. And sometimes we'll be wrong. But all in all, on average, we'll make a lot of money. So anyway, I just wanted you guys to see that. I thought it was important. I thought it was a good one. Um, and a lot of his thoughts um, are very similar to my own. All right, quick, quick catch up here on Bitcoin. It Oh, it's getting super close to that volume, guys. It's getting real close to peak volume. Actually, oh, look at this. So um, we are, if I adjust here, we are above peak volume now. So... This is good. We want to get, oh, no, but if, but if I go back too far, we're out of it. So if, if we shorten our time frame to the last couple of months, it looks like we get close to it. But um, right there. So, yeah, if we go back to like February, we're close to it, but we need to get just a little bit higher. We need to get um, to probably like January uh, volume and then and then we'll be good um, or whatever this is over here. I actually don't know why it's going back and forth. That doesn't make a shit ton of sense. So let's just say we're close. <laughs> And stick with that. All right. I want to hop into Tesla real quick. I haven't looked at it after hours. And I want to see how we're doing after our $100 a month announcement. 0.76%. Okay. So we got a little bit of a bounce there. That's a good sign. Um, did we actually close above? God, we're just right at it. It's hard to know exactly where we're at. Let me go to the four hour and see if it... Oh, no. We did find support, man, on the four hour. Yeah, so we found support on the four hour right at it, and then we bounced higher. 
So, oh man, I just feel like Tesla's doing the right stuff. I feel like it's getting close, guys. We're getting close to the pain being over. Um, I, I had a viral, viral post uh, talking about Tesla and my my options contracts. That got a lot of love and hate yesterday. I think I got over 300,000 views. It might have been more in the end. But um, I don't know. It let, it let me know there's a lot of stupid people out there that don't know the story and don't even understand the company at all. But it also let me know that there's a lot of brilliant people that know that there's a lot of money to be made with this company. So it's kind of cool, man. It's uh, It's cool to see. All the different narratives playing out. Let's go through MicroStrategy. Let's get through the miners too. Um, and yeah, I might I might hit a few shit coins here too because again, they just got brutalized. Um, like Solana maybe at least and Ethereum. Um, so again, we're sitting pretty good here. So we're bouncing after in after hours. We're getting a little bit of a bump. We started to bounce. This still looks like a bull flag on MicroStrategy. I bought some today. I think that's going to turn out to be the right move. Let's look at CleanSpark. Clean Spark. I bought some of this today too because I look at it this way. We've got like this slightly downward sloping line. Yes, we could drop further. So here's here's where we're sitting on our, our ratio now. So 22% downside in my opinion to arguably maybe 25% filling this gap fully over on the right hand side. But the upside just to get back to the previous high is now 71%. So I'll take a 22 to 25% down for a 70 to 71 up. Um, I don't hate that number at all. So I started buying CleanSpark. I told you guys I'd eventually start buying again. Um, I started buying. I did buy uh, Cypher again today too, just because I really like the level that Cypher is sitting at. And I know there was an article. I've got to look more at it um, from JP Morgan talking about these guys are the least well positioned for the Bitcoin having. I think that's fucking stupid. Um, I think those guys are idiots. I don't even know if J Jamie Dimon knows what Bitcoin is. Um, he definitely doesn't understand it well. So, fuck that guy. And fuck his company. Uh, but, let's look over at Cypher here. And we're underneath the FIB, but I think that's going to prove as a bounce zone here. Um, I think we will establish additional support. And I'll just go back here to the daily candle where you can see where we had a ton of sideways support in this range. Now we're underneath it for the week, but again, I think the chance that we're going to want to climb up above that, if there's no major events that happen with India and Israel and it turns out to be a nothing burger, I think Cypher goes up. And Cypher's got a lot of volume support sitting underneath of it too. And it's got that first fib line, really most viewable on the weekly here. Um, and let me see, the profile should come back in a second. But it's it's strong. Yeah, there we go. So again, we're underneath of this, but I think we want to pop back up, up above it again and establish support above it for the first time on the weekly time frame. Because if you look at others, we've never fallen back down and done that. Well, what happens if next week we print a candle up above this again? It'll be the first time it's happened. So I think there's a lot of strength here. I like Cypher at these levels. Um, fuck Jamie Diamond. Fuck JP Morgan and their old Axe legacy banking system. They're a bunch of bullshit. They're all going to fucking die anyways. Um, so fuck them and ignore them and don't take advice from them. Listen to people like me. Um, look at data from people like Sebastian Ski. Listen to people like Rex Finance. Listen to my buddy Mortensen Bach with a lot of this stuff in regard to Bitcoin investments. Um, those are good people. And then listen to my friend. Um, oh, my God. Can't remember his name. Caleb Franzen, my, my God, I don't know why I went blank, in regard to MicroStrategy, because he's right, MicroStrategy is a good bet. He just doesn't believe in miners, and whatever, to each their own. Um, all right, real quickly here, Ethereum, not Ethereum, <laughs> Ethereum. All right, so real quickly here, uh, down 7.52%, but again, I don't know, kind of looking bouncy, Kind of looking bouncy. I don't hate that wick there either. Uh, we'll see what happens here. Again, we'd, we'd need to see some bounce over the weekend heading into next week at least. Try and get back above 3,500. That would be ideal for Ethereum. If, if we don't, then I mean maybe this 100 acts as it. Or maybe it drops even further and can get to the 200. Um, Ethereum is going to move a lot more. I think that's probably too drastic though. I couldn't see us getting much more underneath the 3,000, honestly. Unless something really crazy happens. Then we're pretty fucked. I'm just kidding. Um, sorry. All right. Solana. Kidding about the fuck part. Let's see. Soul, 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 soul. 
How would you hedge against war with Iran and China? Bitcoin. I know it might not seem like it. I know it's been a risk on asset. But if you have a war between two major superpowers and people need to store value in a way that doesn't enrage the other one, it's going to be fucking Bitcoin. It's, gold is not easily transportable. Um, it's going to be Bitcoin. I know it doesn't sound like, right, but it is. Solana fell. Um, starting to find support. You can see it over here. You can see how it was previously support. Turned into resistance. Starting to turn into support again. Could go down to the FIB, maybe the 120s. Um, but again, I bought, like, I think I got 5,000 in Solana today. I bought like 15 grand in shit coins. Don't even remember all of them. Um, but again, I think a lot of these look the same as that. All right, let's move on. Let's go on to, let's look at all the other stuff that got smoked today. All the FinTechs, the ArcGs. Um, I was buying it all. Down 5.42% on Hood today. Again, we could actually go down to this FIB and test in like the low 17 range. Uh, but we're up to 18 and after hours. So we want to go back up. And if we go to the extremely tippy toppy of where Hood used to be, we're still down almost 79% from what some people thought it should be valued at quite a while ago. That's just a crazy number to know that it's still down that much. Um, it's just nuts. But again, from where we're at, I think we have 70% upside, which is why I put another 10 or 15, whatever it was, into Hood today. Uh, maybe it was 20, I don't know. And then I think before we really start to hit volume um, resistance, now that if we can find support right above this hump, man, then we're 70 to 89% upside. I don't have options in this anymore because I don't want to play that game right now. But, oh, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. And, uh, all right, I can't believe there's like 400-ish people. You guys better like the likes. I will stop right here and just stare at the fucking screen. I'm not kidding. Um, anyway. The coffee's starting to kick in. I can't believe there's... Yeah, my thought. I can't believe there's 400 people almost here on a Friday. You guys are either liking what you're seeing or you're really fucking scared or something. Because <laughs> on a Friday, you're here. And usually I get like half this volume. So, pretty cool. Anyway, PayPal. PayPal's still finding support. Uh, uh, you know, got to this next rung here. But if I actually change the volume profile... Let me do something... Sometimes I fine-tune the volume profile. Oh, this is 500 anyway. That's fucking stupid. We want it to be 1,000. I go to 1,000 to 3,000. So here's what I wanted to show you. So again, if you refine it a little bit more, you can see where we're still finding support above the peak of all these volumes. And if this turns into support before we break higher, we're still good. But boy, those poor January 2025 calls today got fucked. And I just can't, I can't buy that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I want to because it's like, oh, that's down 28% today. And these other ones are only down 7%, um, 28% versus 7%. Like you want to buy the one that's really dipped. But I also don't want to take on the additional risk. I think those will still perform well. If they perform like I want them to, I could make a million or two off of those. And if they go to dust and I still have a quarter of a million in January 2026, I'll make up for it. I'll still fucking make money off of it. So... Again, it's all about staggering that risk. It's all about buying more time. I think it's super important. I think enough. there's not enough people that pay attention to things like that, and they just get royally fucked um, because of it. So pay attention. Watch it. What am I looking for? What do I want to do next? So far. And I'll start looking at comments more. How about bit farms? I can look at bit farms. Give me a sec here. Um, so far. So far, I got, uh, it, again, it didn't get above that peak resistance. Um, it didn't close that for the week, so it's still getting rejected pretty good. I think we still find support, like, at the 7 range. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I bounced it a little bit in after hours. Have not added to this play because I just don't like banking-related risk. People are being kinder to the big banks and not so kind to the small ones for some reason. I think some of the fintech falls into that, too. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just want to wanna be cautious on this one. Plus, I don't like the leaps on it. So if we drop more next week, maybe I buy some. Um, I don't know. If, or if something else really takes off and SoFi hasn't went up yet, then I, I might dollar you know cost average into it because uh, I think it could be a laggard. So I'm, not, I'm in no rush. Um, anyway, that's that. We want to get above the dot six one eight. Like I said before, we want to get above $8. That would be ideal. If we could do that, it's a quick trip to like the 950 range and then to the 12, 1150 to 12 range to test um, the, the previous 52-week high. 
All right, let me do. I'll look at square. I'll I'll do bit farms real quick before I forget. Bit farms is probably the same setup, right? Um, let's look at it here. So bit farms. Is this where we're really at? Where are we at with bit farms? This is bit farms. This is bit farms. Okay. So actually, so it's down. It doesn't look right. Oh, I've got it inverted. Do I have this inverted? I must. <laughs> I was like, I know that fucking ain't right. <laughs> All right, so BitFarm's got its ass hand to do it. It's under the 200 moving average on the daily, um, which sucks, actually. Now, it could bounce. It could bounce next week. Again, if we see strength, we're going to see all these things bounce. It could bounce pretty good um, because it wants, it wants to get above the 200 if the world isn't falling apart. But um, if it doesn't, then there's this dead level at $1.60, which is not that far away. And then if you look at peak volumes, um, it really gets strong in like the $1.50 range, $1.45. So I would ex I wouldn't expect it to get much lower than that. I think I think some of these other miners have really gotten their teeth kicked in. Um, I mean, again, what was this one at? This one was at four dollars, and now it's at a dollar eighty. So it's dropped like fifty five percent. That's a pretty decent clip. Just be happy you're not in a hut. Let's see what that piece of shit looks like. Sorry, Sue. I love you. I love you, Sue. You're a sweetie, but I fucking hate this company, and I hope you find employment at a better one. When or if they go bankrupt. Did I say that? Yeah, I did. Don't sue me, bro. It's just my thought. Not saying you will. Just guessing. All right. Negative 481. So this thing, people got really excited about it in July. Uh, got all the way back up in December here to the $18 range. And now it's 772. So if you feel bad about your clean spark, you feel bad about your cipher if you feel bad even about your mara be happy you're not this company because they were i mean these people are royally fucked on a bright note um this company that i do not like and i think is not worth investing in is finding support so that's cool all right let's look at archie archie getting, getting kicked in the nuts Getting her in the nuts. All right, so if we look at our RG here, a crisis justifies consolidation. Oh, we always have crises. We can always manufacture one, if nothing else. There's nothing mainstream media loves doing more than going, what? A war? What? Something horrible happened? Fuck yeah, dude. That gets us clicks. We make money today. Now, again, I'm going to say this. Third time in a row that we're finding support on this previous resistance line. Couldn't do it up here for long. Actually, technically fourth, if you count this brief period back in July where it tried to do the same thing. It tried to go higher. But now we're doing it again, guys. We're finding support at these levels. Um, I think this is juicy, which is why I bought more. So, juicy, juicy. You want your archigenomics. All you guys who love this biotech shit, they've got like 50 of them. How many of these do they have? Just real quick. I can't... I never, I never looked this up on here, so we're going to look it up real quick, okay? Oh, my God, what is that? That's not even dark screen. What the fuck? Um, ugh, sorry for blinding you. All right, so let's just pull this up here real quick. Let's look at this stuff, right? We got things to talk about. I just want to do this because nobody watches my Archie video. But, um, yeah, anyway, so let's look at holdings here. So for all you people who are interested in genomics. I've seen a bunch of you talk about CRISPR, maybe, is one. Uh, Beam, uh, DNA. There's a bunch more on here, right? There's a whole bunch of these. There's a whole PDF about this. Um, these guys have tons. Let's just pull up the PDF. Book it. Where's my PDF at? Give it to me. Did you go there? Where'd you go? All right, one second. We're going to look in here. All right, there it is. All right, let's look here. Art genomics. <laughs> if you guys are ex excited about the genomic future and biosciences, then j go no further than Arc Genomics, as they own tons of shit related to that. And if you guys have one that isn't in here, that's a must have because it's just an amazing company, and you believe there's an 80 to 90% chance that they're going to do really amazing, I want to hear about it. Otherwise, I think that this play is just fine, personally. 
All right, let's grab some more shit. Let's look at square. Let's go to Matterport, DLO, Blooks. Let's get all these others. Um, uh, I don't know, square got hit, 3.83%. Um, it's actually maintaining really well, I gotta say. Like, you can see some a little bit of, you know, trend line support. Um, if we go back here, you can see the peak volumes. It doesn't want to go under any, it looks strong. Um, again, it could still fall. It could fill this gap. I've been saying that for a long time. But re amazingly resilient, uh, in all honesty. I mean, it looks good. Sealess, you're Rebel Jesse. We might get arrested for liking the stream by 2030 if current trends hold. <laughs> I hope not. I'm an optimist, man. Even though I think that nuclear war is a possibility in the near future, I don't think it'll be that bad. So... I'm an optimist. I believe that uh, you drop one or two nukes and people look around and go, fuck, what are we doing? And I don't care if they're communists or not. I mean, if you look at China, is are things going well there? And one could argue that Russia isn't exactly um, a world power. So even, even people in these other countries, if their existence, including our own, if their literal existence is endangered by our governments doing stupid shit. You best believe that people are going to stand up. Um, I believe people will. I know I will. Um, I'll do everything in my power to try and keep my family from being wiped out by a nuke. Um, so I think that I think that people in China are even more desperate. So I don't know. I think people people overlook humanity's willingness to live in self-preservation. All right, Matterport, down 5.85%. A little bit of a bounce in after hours. Meh. I didn't buy any of this today. Again, this is one of my more speculative ones. So when everything's getting crushed and I got miners down 9, 10%, you best believe I'm buying that shit. Tesla officially lowered their full self-driving subscription to 99. Yeah, we saw that. We saw that, Alex. That's really cool, dude. We're loving it. We're loving it over here. DLO. If I missed any of my common ones, too, just because my brain isn't working, you guys let me know or anything else. I'll be getting to your comments here in a second. DLO actually um, looks like it's trying to find support. So in before close, it found support at the dot .618, which is nice. After close, it's right underneath of it. So, meh, maybe we go lower. Not too worried about it, though. And again, I didn't buy into this one because... This is more speculative, and you buy the stuff you really believe in. You buy the micro strategies, you buy the um, clean sparks, the ciphers, the hoods, the things that you believe have the strongest rebound ability. Um, you buy the first movers first, right? And then you can get more speculative if you make a bunch of money off of those and they start to return and these other ones haven't quite went up by much yet. Then you can diversify into those. All right, Flux, down 2.89%. This actually did pretty good for the week. Um, it, we really need to get above this like peak volume, and uh, I think it's the five dollar range or no 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 four seventy, uh, yeah right around five right around five we want to get up to five, so if we can get above that um, and start establishing support that's the first real time we've done that in a long time um, from backward testing we usually just fall underneath of it last time we really tried to test and held on a little bit was over here, so I think that's good. All right, let me get to comments here. See how many more rants I can get in. Wild Frenchie, 100. Paul Hoger, check on soul, please. I did. Intelligent Computing, holy smoke, sold down to $150. Yep, maybe to $120. Intelligent Computing, smash the like, peeps. Yes, what he said. Pump this shit. I said some stuff. Wild Frenchie, soul is a good entry point if you don't have any, in my opinion. Oh, totally. I think right now is a great time to get into soul. I think people... I don't want to say this because I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a high school dropout. But I think if you didn't have exposure to any shit coins, Soul would be a good start. And this current price level um, is much lower than it was at. Intelligent Computing, Wild Frenchie, yes, with possible retracement to 100 if markets keep dumping. I'd, I'd say 120. Wild Frenchie, Friday is for buying. Weekend is for going up. I agree with that, actually. And if you look at Bitcoin, it's not too crazy either. Uh, Mike Pepper, good afternoon, everyone. Things are feeling a lot more volatile today. I love these days. Me too. Um, I will say, though, over the weekend, if we have some massive geopolitical breakout in a broader war in the Middle East, it might be a time to go down. Maybe not for Bitcoin, though. You can quote me. Um, intelligent Computing, BTC miners are my soul. Yeah, okay. Teach their own. I like diversification, but you do you. Mike Pepper, I'm 50, and BTC is a safe haven play for me. I agree, Mike. I totally agree, dude. 
Jason G. Uh, oh, let me see here. Jason G. had a stock pick. Let me pull it up. Um, LNTH. I don't think I have that one. I'll just check real quick. Today's going to be a fun day. My daughter's got her cousins sleeping over. It's beautiful where I live in the Midwest. So um, we're actually going to have a bonfire outside, and we're doing a bunch of stuff around the house. And who knows, maybe schmores or something. I'm excited. It's going to be a good weekend. I'm going to get some more mountain biking in. Maybe hang out with my buddy Tony. Tony, if you're listening. Um, Derek, I don't know if you watch my shit, but if you are, we should go biking. Um, all right. What was I doing? What was I doing? Oh, yeah, this other one. LNTH. My bad. Just start ranting and about my shit. Lanthius, Lanthius Holdings. Um, all right. This one is a little bit tricky of a pattern. Looks like it could roll over. Um, lots of ability to drop lower because it got, it tested up to 100, dropped down. It's got the 50 curling down. Um, that's kind of kind of weird, a little sketchy. Uh, 4.17 billion dollar company. Let's just look at it real quickly. Um, was it LNTH? Is that what it is? Yeah, Lanthius. Okay. Uh, 35% growth year over year. Net income isn't bad. 100 million dollars actually. That's pretty good. Um, P ratio 13, forward 9, single digits. These guys are drug manufacturers, specialty and generic. Uh, out of Massachusetts. Um, cash positions actually outpacing debt. Uh, looking good for forecasts, nothing bad. Uh, insider activity, a little more buying than selling. Kind of a trend of that since 2020, really. Institutional ownership's increased a lot. Short interest is kind of rolling over. This is kind of cool. I'm gonna this weekend. I'm gonna spend at least one day going through about ten different ticker symbols. Um, I think this is gonna be one of them. LNTH, uh, strong company, low valuation. Check out options plays. Cool man. I dig it. Um, I'm not gonna say much more about it now, but I will look at it, my friend. Um, you got me interested. Cool. Nice start to this session. Wild Frenchie, Intelligent Computing, thumbs up. Can I get it? I got AI in here. I'm trying to figure out how to get it to work. Um, but every once in a while, <laughs> it'll do things and put them on the display. I got to figure it out, though. I don't quite understand how it works. Um, all right. Uh, Disease Kodak. Sup, Jesse? Mike Pepper, nice intro. Thank you. Uh, Jermaine Lambert, everything on sale. Done some nice stock and shitcoin shopping today. Good for you, my friend. Seelis. Damn, quality altcoins down like 18 to 21%. I agree, I love it. Oh, that's another one I bought. Render, R-E-N-D-R, uh, the crypto token, please, if you're comfortable. Yes, I can pull that one up. Um, I did buy that one too, now that you mention it. Um, I think the technicals on this are gonna look just like every other decent one that's pumpy. Um, this is not a bad looking chart though, I gotta say. I mean, look at that. Look at that shit right there. Um, look at that, like almost like wicking up hard from its drop. This thing was down to 667 and it's 806 already. So again, these are the ones like Render and, and Solana and a few of these others um, are arguably, um, I'd say near protocol too. And, and uh, there's a decent amount, guys. The ones that are really pumping that have strong looking charts. Look at this chart. Doesn't even look like it's getting ready to take a nap. Doesn't even look like it. Um, these are easy buys, in my opinion. You bought this down here, you already made 10%. Already. Today. Like, in the last hour. <laughs> That's the kind of dip buying you want to do. Yes, sir. Sealess. Yes, sir. Jermaine Lambert. Sealess. Yay, I had a nice day out in the mall. Glad to hear it, man. Bain. Hey, Jesse, can you look at BITF today? I already did. Sealess. Jesse, didn't you say you disliked the leaps the other day? Uh, too complicated? Sorry, which ones are we talking about right now, man? Um, for SoFi, I, I haven't liked the leaps yet. Um, I don't know which ones you're talking about, though. If you could tell me which stock, I'll look over at it. Um, uh, Mike Pepper. Nah, he always promoted leaps. I always promote leaps, but I don't know which ones we're talking about. Uh, Sean Castorano. I don't think we've looked at EB since last week. Can you take a look at the TA if time permits? Yes. VIX is up 20% today. Just today. It's a powerful number. All right, what was that? Oh, damn it. Gotta not move on when I get a ticker symbol or I forget it. 
Uh, Evie. Okay. Let's look at this one. This one gotten beat up at all? Let's find out. All right. Eventbrite. Wow. This one's actually found support really strongly. That is a wild line. Um, huh. 555 million. Let me remind myself. I think this one's on my list, but I don't remember if it was on the naughty or the nice. Um, let's look. Event. Right. Okay. All right. Let's look here. Um, revenue. Nice. That's a hell of an increase, um, but it's 87 million. Yeah, but you're a $555 million company and you got more cash than debt. I don't hate that. Your operating expenses aren't going up a lot. You still need more free cash flow though. Um, you're diluting. Um, so I think that's kind of throwing off cash flow, but let me look here. Um, growth is going up. I'd really like to see this company become profitable, but hey, man, it could be trending that way. Don't really have a lot of information from insider activity. Um, just isn't telling us much. And then institutional ownership took a dip, but it started going back up again. So I think people are kind of on the edge, but their last earnings must have been pretty de decent. And uh, stock based comp is still 15, almost 16% of revenue. Don't love that. If they can just fine tune things and get it to where their operating, their revenue goes up above the OPEX or operating expenses, that would be nice. But 23% growth year over year isn't bad. Um, yeah, they just need to start making money. They just need to, they, they're not there yet. Um, this is the kind of stuff where I'm not super interested in it yet, but you're, you're right in regard to the fact that, I mean, you've got higher lows. I might still just jot this down from a technical play. Might be something I'd want to dial into if I make a bunch of money off of something else. Um, just as like a sampler to keep track of it. Because again, you got since April of 2020, you've got positive RSI divergence on the weekly time frame. And you got arguably, you know, at least divergence over the last couple of months of the MACD. Um, so th this thing has wanted to curl up. This thing's wanted to curl up. The question is, can it in this kind of environment? And this is more speculative. So I don't know that I'd be super interested, but I am going to put it on my list of ones to review. And some of these I won't do a deep dive in yet, so I'll still be pretty ignorant about them. It'll just be like looking at options plays, trying to figure out if it could, has the potential to be an asymmetric bet, and then ranking them, and then whichever ones rank the highest, I will look at and do a deeper dive. That's kind of the gist. Uh, that's how I do it. Um, let's see. Hey, Jesse. Jesse didn't... Uh, nope, I already did that. Uh, this up. Uh, Mike Pepper. Uh, NBUS. Uh, crazy, huh? Talking to somebody else, intelligent computing, peak FUD, or is this just the start of the next few weeks to months? It could be. It could roll over more. I mean, we could. I think though, there's got to be got to be a really negative narrative on geopolitical f for me to think that we're going a lot lower. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Dan twenty four up FSD price lowered. Okay, that's where we got that. Macro could go either way, regardless of the money printer. We'll need to crank up. I agree with that, Mike Pepper. Um, confirmation that we did lower Tesla lowered the subscription down to $99. I think that's great. Levi. Oh, wow. That's huge. We'll give them so much more data. Agreed. It's all about the data guys. First introduced in, uh, early 2005 Turkish Lira was equivalent to 1 million of the old Turkish Lira during reevaluation in 2005. A new law removed the last six zeros from the value of the Lira. Yeah. There's a lot of history there. And then, uh, they did crazy things like uh, not raising rates when their currency was inflating to shit and back. Um, worked for a while. Now they're fucked. And now Turkey is um, doing some trade embargo against Israel too. So again, they just want to throw their hat in on hating Israel. That's kind of what happens in that region. Uh, anyway, Mike Pepper, my little cad is taking a hit. I don't know if you wanted me to look at that. Any thoughts on bros? Yep, I'll tell you. Look, uh, Drew S., have you heard about mobile eye having better FSD than Tesla? Yeah, I don't believe that. You, show me some videos, Drew. If you got some, if you got some videos and you got some data showing me how it saves more lives and how it's better technology and how it's better code and how it can handle all the scenarios that FSD 12.34 can do, or 334, then, uh, then, then we can talk. But I gotta, I gotta know how well it's doing. And I had a friend who used some of that. Um, I think they have like a mobile app and like you can have your own, like, and it was that great. And I don't know anymore since then. 
By Pepper, I think the June rate cut will have a higher probability. I think it'll come around to a higher probability in June or July, and I think one of those dates happen. I don't think it could be September. I think people are forgetting the fact that there's a lag. C-List, Intelligent Computing. Did Fujitsu actually manufacture your 30-year-old keyboard? How do you correct it, uh, connect it to modern computers? I used to know a man who worked for Fujitsu. All right, anyway. Omar Serrano, uh, nice. Tesla started to pump after hours. Cool. My pepper, my costs on Chinese imports have been coming down steadily, almost to the point of dumping. Yeah, I believe it, man. I don't know what you do, uh, Mike Pepper, but uh, curious. Uh, Samarth Gandhi, hey, Jesse, uh, if you're in PayPal January 2025, 140 calls, when would you transition? It's up to you, man. I'm not transitioning, but here's my here's my deal with that. Um, I'm ride or die. So what you do with, it with, with yours is totally up to you. The January 2026 are going to have a higher premium, so your potential for return will be lowered. Um, I'm not willing to take that. I still want to take the bet of I can make, you know, three to four X pretty easy on my PayPal January 2025s if I'm right about like the next four to five months. A little, yeah, about five months. Um, and then if it doesn't happen in five months, I mean, they're just fucked. They're going to dust. And uh, that's okay. That's okay. I think... Uh, that will cost, that'll be about $350,000 of a play that did not work out for me. Um, but that's what I'm looking at. And uh, and again, if it doesn't work in that and we continue to grind sideways, I will be buying into January 2026. As long as the world isn't falling apart, um, then I might be more into things like Bitcoin. Anyway, and Tesla as it goes down. All right. Uh, Nick. I'll be subscribing to FSD with that manual monthly price drop to $99. I have to imagine there are a lot of others that feel the same way. I mean, it beats buying it for like 12000 right? I think. I think it beats buying it. $99 a month. That's uh, $1,200 a year. Uh, a little more with tax. That's not a bad number. Um, that's like, uh, what, nine years worth of driving? <laughs> if you had to pay for it outright. But here's the thing. Once... Once they can, literally, like once it's so good that it just has very few intermissions and it's, it becomes better than like what I think of my driving, which some would argue is not the greatest, but I would say is phenomenal, especially for the some of the speeds that I can get up to. Not that I'm a crazy, crazy driver. I'm an opportunistic crazy driver. When there's nobody around, I might let her rip. But, and with a Tesla, I can do that like really easily. But what was my point? Um, I don't know. Something about Tesla FSD. You guys let me know if you remember. Whatever. All right. Let's go through here. Um, started the pump. Uh, Wild Frenchie, red lipstick. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, Nibis, lol. Sealess, uh, exports and construction are both their lifeblood. They will become stuck in the middle income trap. Yeah. Um, the problem is they're not even... It's not a middle income trap. They literally... Um, like three fourths of their country is in poverty, man. Like it's a huge number. It's a really bad number. There are people that live off of a, like I'd say forty percent of the country lives off a hundred and thirty five dollars a fucking month in China. You do that math. You tell me what great fucking power China is when forty percent of their goddamn. Or, sorry, I'm trying to not use that particular cuss word. So we'll just back that out. 40% of their country is making a wage that is something anybody in the United States could do with a day's income if they worked hard enough. 30 days. That's sad. So I have, like, China's, the CCP is disgusting. Um, they're the biggest murderer of Chinese people in history. They murder Muslims every day and torture people all the time. There is nobody that hates the Chinese people more than the CCP. They can fuck off. Some people think that I don't like China. I love China. I would love to visit China. I, I don't want to have my head cut off or be tortured to death because I said some shit on social media that those motherfuckers didn't like. But someday I will go there and I will, I will smile, and laugh, and hug the people of China and talk about their shitty dictator that got his head cut off, and a bunch of other parts. That's probably going to get this demonetized. <laughs> oh, well, fuck it. 
Fuck it. Can I do the explosion thing? I don't know. How does that AI thing work? I don't know anymore. All right. Anyway, <laughs> like, like this, like, like this video, please get it out there. All right. Um, let me see. Where am I at here? I'm trying to get down. Get a good. Uh, the cost of war is never worth it. I agree, Connor. It sucks, man. Uh, people's lives shouldn't be so easily expended at the at the you know request of tyrants or people that live good lives and have tons of power and will never have to to be in the trenches in any country. Good manufacturing will move to a variety of better countries faster. Westerners want high want high end chips. I agree. Um, and hopefully we get those as soon as possible. And I think that there's an incentive for China to attack before um, chips in Taiwan mean nothing, at least if they think they can, which is why we have to be strong. We have to let them know they can't. Intelligent computing. Tesla's ARR uh, annual reoccurring revenue is going to moon. I agree, bro. Um, I agree. Owner, Ken Duman. Uh, hopefully I said that even closely right. Jesse, can you please check the DXYZ? I can, my friend. Let me save some EB and go to the DXYZ. I feel like I'm rhyming. I feel like I'm in cat in a hat or something. All right. Woof. What? What is this? The Destiny Tech 100? What is this? It's down 42% today. Can somebody tell me what this shit is? China needs me. Um, I don't know, man. They need, they need, they need leaders who remotely care about human beings. That's all they need. If they can just get that, they'll have something better. I don't know what to say about DXYZ, bro. <laughs> it, it dropped by almost fifty percent today. What the fuck is this? Can somebody tell me what this? Here, I gotta look, just out of curiosity. It's like this tech fund, but what is this, dude? This is, is this like? The worst, like the apocalypse. I can't even look it up on visual stocks. Yeah, I don't know, man. I wouldn't buy it, whatever it is, if it can drop 42% in the day. That's my take. Especially if you don't know what's in it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. All right, let me see here. Um, JPM is so big, it's not permitted acquisitions except during crisis. A crisis justifies... Um, all right, let me go back up here. See, let's, a few, there were a few comments I might have missed. Maybe, um, oh, no, oh, maybe I got to scroll up. I hate, sometimes this thing moves on me, and so I might be missing stuff. Sorry. Okay, now I'm back. Uh, all right, um, FSD should be 199 if you drive for work. Yeah, whatever. 99 is good, man. Just get people in. Get the data. Quick, more data. We, we were, we're not restricted on compute. Make data explode. Perfect it very quickly. Give us 12.3.5. Give us 13. Pump the shit out. Fix all the bugs. Fix all the one-offs. Um, and, and get it to where it's something that is so seamless and beautiful that it warrants $200 a month. And then you can think about increasing it. But just get people using it. Um, Chris uh, Federal, my buddy. Um, the Larry Fink video was good. My wife even liked, liked, liked it as she was driving. And I didn't even have... Um, my earbuds in cool man uh heinz in uh not just a football club masquerading as a country not sure what that means right now onar khan duman uh we we are 373 people uh here but there is just 40 yeah yeah hopefully we got more likes i haven't looked do we have all the likes guys did we smash all the likes hopefully somebody give me the latest like count uh, Lamb the Post finally got in the live stream. You're the bomb, Jesse. Keep it up. Uh, hey, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Intelligent computing. I think FSD should be seventy dollars a month. I love that number too. Up to an average of a hundred. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Like some tiered thing where if you're an excessive user, you pay a little bit more. I don't hate that, man. Pay for usage. I love it. Um, that way, if somebody really, really wants to use it, it's just unlimited. But for people that don't use it as much and want to try it, they pay sixty nine. And plus, it's 69. What a great number for Elon Musk. BD, 560. BD, 5600. Um, I don't know what we're talking about. Intelligent computing, no, 5600. Oh, oh, this is about the S&P um, and what Tom Lee's targets were. Okay, I'm getting caught up. Um, Frank, Hong Kong, about to dive into BTC, transferring out of gold. I think, 
They're going to be doing both. They're going to be buying all of it, man. There's a lot of money that needs to flee China. Intelligent Computing, IWM, as, a.k.a. RUT, as it daily, weekly, VRV, uh, VP support. IWM has volume. RUT doesn't. Yeah. Okay. You're just saying that you think, do you think the Russell's going to find its support quicker? Maybe. Intelligent Computing, Tesla, Grinding, yes. Emit, Cypher, woohoo, yes. Lamb, The Post, CPNG, please. Let's do that. All right, and I think I got at least another 5 to 15 in me, guys. Um, CPNG is up. Oh, this is Kupang Inc. This isn't based out of China, right? Is it Singapore or something? Um, it's up 11.5%. Had a good bounce. Getting up to the that seven eight six, but I'm not even sure how I have that drawn. Um, let's go over here. CPNG. Seoul, Korea. Okay, I like Korea. That net income was sick. One billion dollars. Um, I mean, their guide went down a little bit, but their revenue is still growing. They're growing at 23%. Their cash is going up while their debt is diminishing. Um, insider activity has a lot of selling, no real buying since 2021. Um, kind of flat on institutional ownership. Short interest has started going up a, a little bit. Well, that's extended. Let me go back to snapshot. No, no, that's still the same. Uh, let's see here. Stock based comp is only 2%. Um, I like the operating leverage. Again, revenues are going higher than. It looks like it looks like their expenses don't, don't really increase much, so that's good. Net margins are going up. Those are these are all good things, um, and it's got a lot of institutional ownership. And it's it popped, man. It had a good day. Was there news? Um, can you tell me what what news they might have had? Um, but yeah, yeah. So that that one's doing better than DXYZ. Uh, and again, 11.5% move is nice. I just don't know if there's going to be more in this. It's a $38 billion company. I th think that's probably where I struggle. Let's look here. So revenue is $6.5 billion. They had one quarter where they had over a billion, but there might have been a one time because normally it's about 80 to $90 million, and I think that's kind of where their estimates are going to, maybe a little bit higher. So they're about $90 million netting a quarter, but they're... $38 billion company growing at 23%. So I think I struggle at it from just that vantage. It's just a, such a high valuation. It definitely has love and, uh, and and faith in it. India and Israel, or did you mean Iran and Israel? I thought it was in regard to that conversation. Um, trying to think. Oh, I probably meant, well, I mean, it depends. Yeah, yeah, Iran, Iran and Israel. If I said India, I didn't mean it. I did mean that we should work with India and um, Argentina and build, help build out those locations along with Mexico and whatever other country wants to work with a bunch of capitalists, democratics. So we need to build that strength up. We need to work with every every group that will be anything like that. Silas, uh, Iran said it would attack this week after Ramadan ended. We're getting awfully late. Not so timely, those Iranians. Alex Hosenlar. Hosenlar. Jesse, how would you hedge against war with Iran or China? And I kind of said that. Um, I've got Starbucks and, and Bed Bath and & Beyond. I actually think Palantir could be a pretty good stock if when I think we're getting closer to war and if I make a bunch of money off of some of these other plays, I will be buying more Palantir. I did buy Palantir this last week, but then I jumped out of it. Um, I took that extra $50,000 to buy all these dips, especially in Bitcoin. So I went from 750000 about a week, week plus maybe, eight, nine days or nine days ago to like almost zero cash right now, like zero, really low. So I've been, I've been buying that fucking dip. I think I did 120 k today. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think Palantir, I think, again, Starbucks will be a good one because China will just, over 30% of the revenues come from China and China's fucked. That's what's really dragging them down. I've been saying that for like nine months now and it's, finally starting to play out um, best buy just because their legacy and if if retail starts to get destroyed from a recession i think that happens but maybe not so much in regard to war maybe in regard to war too because uh, maybe that's the end of best buy because really a lot of our electronic goods um, that are sold in best buy are coming from china and if we go to war um, all that shit just shuts down uh, 
I don't know, Amazon might be able to maneuver a little bit better, but will Best Buy be able to? I'm going to say no, man. I just don't think they're dynamic enough. And then, again, Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin, Palantir, that shit. Uh, hey, Jesse, can you take a look at Lulu and Snow? We got 136 likes. That's not enough likes. We need more likes. Come on, 275 concurrent viewers. If you guys just hit the fucking likes, 50% of you have done that. Come on, come on. For the love of Pete, I'm going to protest right now if you don't. It takes like two fucking seconds. Hi, Jesse. Can you look at Lulu and S or Snow? Lulu or Snow? I get to choose. I love that. Maybe I'll do both. But then, I don't know. I might quit after that. Let's see. Lululemon. Intelligent computing micro to keep your place in the chat. Search the pop out chat window. Yeah, I could do that. I've actually got one that comes up, um, but I also want to have this. And if I do the pop out, it just pops it out, and I don't necessarily easily have the place I'm looking for. So I'm trying to trying to have it to where there's two open, um, and I think I've got a better way of doing this too that I'm going to do in the future. So I think I already have an idea of how I'll, I'll resolve it. Uh, Lululemon, wow, this really has, this was such a darling for a long time of a stock. And it really has just gotten crushed since December. Um, this thing was at 515 and now we're at 336. That is a hell of a drop. Um, what happened to this company? Just one sec. Jeez, dude. Yeah, but before you, before you go, if you're getting ready to go, Hit the fucking like. Comment. Say some shit. Hit the like. Come on, people. 16% um, revenue growth. The revenue still looks good. Net income doesn't look bad. $669 million. It's a $40 billion valuation. But it's not super crazy. I mean, I guess in this industry, maybe it is. Um, 27 PE, 24.69 forward. Estimates show growth still. Um, this is still a steady eddy, like a strong company, but not getting a lot of love from the street. There are people shorting this. Maybe it's because I don't know how much they get from international markets for business. Um, and I don't know how much risk are, is all their stuff made in China? Is it? I mean, maybe that's why this has plummeted so hard. Um, because yeah, it's taking a hit on the chin, man. Not pretty. All right, let's see how snow is doing today, our snowflakes. And I know I've complained before. I just don't think snow is comparable when you've got a company like Palantir. I think people like Arnie and Amit and all these others that have been big advocates for Palantir are just right. Um, so this thing's been pretty beat the fuck up from 236 down to 150s, starting to find support. Um, it's a $53 billion company. And if I remember correctly real quick, just looking at snow for the people who might have it or be interested in buying it. Um, they don't make any money. Doesn't that suck? Lose $170 million a quarter. I mean, I guess that's better than $214 million. But this is a $53 billion valuation. They do have some positive cash flow. They have a lot of R&D. That's like almost 40% of their expenses or 35 or something. But, um, yeah, they have a decent revenue, $774 million, But when you're losing $190 or $169 million from that, is that great? Now, it's the EPS. If there's anything that should give them a bounce, it's the fact that they actually look like they're going to try and get to profitability soon. Growth is 32%. But even if these guys get to profitability, it's a $53 billion company. I mean, look at Palantir. It's so much better, in my opinion. Um, Maytag, hey, Jesse, hoping we don't see further Mideast escalation. Could bring more BTC volatility. I think it'll actually turn into a positive for Bitcoin. I know that sounds crazy. As well as impacting the broad, it will impact the broader market negatively. negatively. I don't know. It might, it might actually hurt bitcoin over a very short period of time but i think then bitcoin would bounce back super fast so it would be a buy the dip opportunity and then i think it would turn into strength and further upside and i think it would do it fast it would do a lot quicker than the traditional markets 
Jesse, I'd like to hit the like button second time for you, but you can't. Yeah, well, talk to those first timers, man. Those people need to fix it. Fix it, guys. Um, all right, so I think um, I think I've pretty much I gotten close to caught up in chat. Um, sorry, I wasn't as active. Again, I'm gonna try and do some stuff that helps me get more active in the chat while trying to be fair and roll through it. Uh, and maybe I'll only look at ticker symbols and then just try and focus on the live chat. Um, yeah, I'll probably try and do that too. Who knows? But anyway, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think we're done. Hopefully, this red shirt's gonna go away and get retired. I don't. I got at least. I got at least one or two good green shirts. So I'm gonna try. I'm hoping Monday is green, and uh, I'll try and get maybe a buy the dip type stock. Uh, honestly, though, um, over this weekend I'll try and do something like that. But honestly, probably still gonna be really focused on macro. Definitely geopolitical risks. Um, there's some more economic data I want to go through. I want to pay attention to the Middle East. I want to pay attention to what's going on with China. Um, so I might give some weekend videos, at least in regard to that kind of stuff, and maybe a members-only video. I won't promise it, but maybe one of those two over the weekend in regard to some stock review, um, if time permits and the weather is not too nice here. So I'll try and do a bunch of that. Otherwise, you guys have a great weekend. Again, if you could comment, like, do all that stuff before you leave, greatly appreciate it. Love you guys. Um, really appreciate everybody that subscribes to and contributes to this channel. Uh, we're going to grow. We're going to get better. I'm starting to throw out a bunch of YouTube shorts. We're going to get big. We're going to do it fast, and it's going to be fucking awesome. But I hope you guys have a great weekend. Remember, money is just a part of life. Uh, if we all die from a nuclear explosion, uh, make sure that you tell your family and the people around you that you love them and spend your last moments with them. And even better, if it's a great day where you're at, just uh, pretend like that could happen and enjoy the time that you have with the people you love. I will see you guys um, over the weekend. And for the people who don't check in then, I will see you Monday in the next Market Recap.